what's going on my name is Sid and welcome to this exciting tutorial where I'm going to reveal a powerful little trick to magically remove banding from your 8-bit images. So banding also known as posterization occurs when the bit depth is insufficient to render a smooth gradation of color and tone. And in this bit depth video linked above, we saw why more bits are not always better and that an 8-bit image is ideal for the final output. If you don't really understand bit depth and the difference between 8 or 16 bits, it is very important you watch that video, so go check it out. While the main benefit of 16-bit images is the ability to manipulate them with minimum risk of banding, their downside is huge file sizes and slower performance. If an 8-bit image could retain the image quality of a 16-bit image, then we wouldn't need 16 bits at all. And the technique I'm about to show you will make it possible. Don't believe me? Keep watching. So our goal here is to take full advantage of the 8 bits unrestricted Photoshop filter menu, speed and file size while retaining the image quality of 16 bits. Before we begin, make sure that Photoshop's dithering is enabled. Go to Edit, Color Settings and make sure Use Dither 8 bits per channel images is checked. To minimize the risk of banding in the final conversion to 8 bits, Photoshop will often add a bit of noise called dither. So in this example, I have two exactly same gradients. On the left is the 16-bit image and on the right is the 8-bit. Now if I add curves to the 16-bit image first to remove the contrast and then add another curve layer to bring in back the contrast by compressing the histogram, it looks pretty much like it did before. Now when I copy these same adjustment layers to the 8-bit image, we get banding, which of course we know happens and that's why we retouch on 16-bits, right? But watch what happens when I convert this 8-bit image to the 16-bit by going to Image mode and choosing 16 bits per channel and boom just like that the banding is gone but if i convert it back to 8 bit again the banding is back so let's redo the last step to make it 16 bit again and now here is the main trick to permanently remove banding from the 8 bit image excited so once you're done with all the adjustment layers and convert the 8 bit file to 16 bits all you have to do is merge all the visible layers onto a new layer on top first and the Photoshop shortcut for merge up is Command Option Shift E or Control Alt Shift E. And now simply convert the file back to 8 bits and you'll be magically left with an 8 bit image without any banding permanently. How cool is that? Well, I really hope you can see the difference on your screen because YouTube tends to add quite a bit of compression. Anyway, the crazy thing is you can also save this file as an 8 bit PSD with the banding and when you reopen it at any time and do the 16-bit conversion and merge up, you will still get the same smooth gradient back. I mean, what is happening here? This means that the 8-bit file was holding the 16-bit data all along. Now let's try this technique with two different real-world images. And don't miss the second example with JPEGs downloaded from the internet. So, we'll start with a raw image in Camera Raw. It's best to do all major exposure and color corrections in RAW so the image file retains the full 16-bit image data. By clicking this text below, you get the options where you can select the bit depth and color space. You can export it directly as an 8-bit, but for this comparison, I'll select the 16-bit first and then convert it to 8-bit later in Photoshop. This technique works both ways. So the first thing I'll do is create a duplicate of this image and go to Image, Mode and convert it to 8 bits per channel. So if I arrange them side by side, I now have the same image in 16 and 8 bits. And as you can see, they look exactly the same. Most issues with the 8 bits are usually caused when making changes to the 8 bit data, not the initial conversion, as you'll see now. I'm going to start with the 8 bit image first and create the same two curves as before. The first one is to remove the contrast almost completely by making the curves flat. And with the next one, add it back to hopefully create banding. If I compress the histogram further with curves, banding gets even more prominent. Now watch what happens as soon as I copy all these layers and paste it on the 16-bit image. Now don't panic, but what you're seeing right now is not real banding. This is nothing but a low quality preview of Photoshop's layered file that tricks photographers to falsely believe there is banding. So keep in mind that when you're zoomed out less than 66.7%, you might experience this thing called false banding. So make it a habit to always zoom in at least 66.7% to make sure that any banding you see is real. So when I zoom in more than 66.7%, the banding is gone. That means it was not real. So relax, our 16-bit file is still clean. Now going back to the 8-bit file, when I zoom in, I'm seeing banding even when I'm zoomed in above 66.7%. So now I'll start with the technique. 
So the first step is to convert the image to 16 bits, which gets rid of the banding, and then merge the layers into a new one on top, and finally convert it back to 8 bits. And the quality is pretty much the same when compared to the 16 bit zoomed in. So the 8 bit file is holding up quite well with all the violent edits we've done. Now let's move on to the final test, a medium high quality 8 bit stock image downloaded from the internet. Here you don't even have an option to start in 16 bits, so get ready for this end game. Now in order to imagine we did some heavy corrections on it, I'll create the extreme curves. First, to make it flat, and the second to bring in back the contrast. Now to emphasize the banding, I think I'll add some vignette below the curves. Great. Now to make sure if the banding is real, let's zoom in more than 66.7%. And it is real. So imagine now that all my non-destructive retouching is done, and I'm ready to send the final output to print or upload it on the internet. So the first thing I'll do is convert the image to the 16 bit, and just like that, the banding is gone. And then, merge all the layers up to a new layer, and finally, convert it back to 8 bits to seal the deal. To show you the difference clearly, I'm going to create my visual help layer, and turn on the dust check layer. What you're seeing now is the smooth merge layer, and if I hide it, take a look at the banding. And now, take a look at the before, and after. What a difference. This is an 8 bit file with extreme editing. I am mind blown. Remember that this method works only with non-destructive workflow, that is, retouching mainly with adjustment layers and smart objects like we have incorporated in the Pro Workflow X panel. And this technique won't work if you just duplicate the background and start attacking it with adjustments. Anyway, I really don't know how to explain what's going on in the background of this technique or hack. What do you guys think? Is it a bug? And now that 8 bits can retain the 16 bit quality, are you still going to use 16 bits? Let me know in the comments below. So I really hope you guys found this video helpful. Like it if you do and subscribe and ring the bell for more to come. Until then, have fun retouching.